What's up, guys? Welcome to VHB Engines. Um, when I, I decided that I was going to dedicate an entire video to a topic that is like of super fucking importance, so I guess you know it deserves its own video. I kind of briefly brushed up back on it recently on uh, the last video build for right here. Um, but I want to, you know, to go into finer detail because I was kind of in a rush that night. It was getting late, and I didn't really. I didn't really want to stop to talk about it too much. Plus, I couldn't remember the measurements off the top of my head because it's been a little bit of time since I've done it. So I'm going to show you now, and I'm also going to I'm going to show you screenshots and provide links so that way you guys can find this information. And of course, as always, feel free to hit me up on questions. <clears throat> now, this is going to help you not only you know to know. If your crank is good or not, this this video, but it's also going to tell you what size bearings you need, um, without going into the, you know, the color coding and all that shit. So, as I talked about, you want to be able to to go over the crank with your finger, and feel everything. It should be mirror smooth, like as smooth as glass. You shouldn't find any abrasion or damage. You know, most of the time, you can look at a fucking crank and tell right away whether it's damaged or not. And um, But you also want to be able to check because you want to check sizes because you want to know if the crank has been ground or not. And uh, ground or cut, and, you know. And there's also one of those things that go around where people say, oh, cut crank is garbage, and cut crank is a piece of shit, can't use it for anything. That's not true. Uh, on, for two reasons, I want to say, you know, one, I've actually used cut cranks before, uh, twice, and uh, no problems. And also, secondly, um, those color codings, for those, those color bearing codes that you get from the Honda, you know, those are just, those color codes are just different size bearings. Different size bearing mean, as in, the bearings are thicker. Why would the bearings be thicker? Because material has been coming, removed off the crank. So Honda it, themselves, you know, designed a different set of bearings they're OEM for resized cranks so for me if Honda's already made preparations for it then I really don't see the reason why anybody would say cut cranks are garbage other than the fact that you know it's one of those things that spreads on the internet somebody picks it up and runs with it all right so luckily enough for me you know B series and single cams are the are the builds I do the most so the single cams and B series all share the same, you know, size diameter for the bearings, so it's easy for me to keep the memories and or keep the memory. And normally, I did have it memorized, but I forgot a little bit because I hadn't done a fucking a check in a long time. Anyway, so we're gonna do a rod rod general first, and I would recommend that you get uh, a digital one because it's just that much easier instead of trying to read the, uh, the manual mechanical. I mean. All right, so you want to do take your measurement in the middle, as close to the middle as you can, and try to make sure it's even. You don't have any play. And then come off of it. Oh, hold on. There we go. All right, see that reading for that raw journal is seventeen seventy one. So that's actually right at the minimum that you can use standard bearings for. Uh, now, in the picture I'm going to post and show you guys to see the measurements, it'll show you maximum maximum size and minimum size. Minimum size being the, as small as you can go and still use uh, standard size bearings. Now, with that being said, too, uh, I have also used uh, cranks where one journal had a little bit of wear on it, a little bit more than needed, not that much. But let's say 1771 is the maximum size, and I got a... 17 like 66 or 68 69 right i would say that that's um close enough within range that it can be used safely i once again this is something i've done uh it's always better to be a little bit loose on the bearing size than a little bit too tight uh, you can usually get away with it being a little bit on the loose side now with that being said too i also want to want to talk about you using that you being that way, allowing for that little bit of looseness, I wouldn't suggest doing that on something that you know is going to get power thrown at it. If you're going to do a stock rebuild, you're a little bit off, and you know, you're a little bit under on one or one journal, then yeah, I would say not throw out that crank just for a little bit under on the minimum side. 
on one journal. Now, if you got it where your measurements are low and they're off by a good amount all the way across the board, then I wouldn't fuck with it. I'd just go ahead and toss the crank and get a new one. Hopefully, you're in a metropolitan area and the crank ain't going to cost you too much. You don't have to order it. All right. Now, 1771 is the minimum size for the rod journals on B and D series. Now, let's see. Okay. And the minimum for the mains are 2164. And again, you can see it's almost perfect. 2165. Now, I'm not going to measure all these right now just because of the fact that this crank I've had for a little while, thanks to Homie Ariel, who took pity on me when I got robbed. Um, so I've already checked this crank out. I know it's good, so I'm not going to measure any more on it. But uh, there's that. Now you have my opinion on cut cranks, on a little bit undersized, and you know what to check for, and you know what size to check for. Now, I'm also going to leave you a link for the main page of that ACL chart so that way you can see any car any car the list is on there so uh, if you need to go find your K-series or you need to find bearing size for, uh, for Mercedes you'll be able to find them all there <clears throat> alright guys uh, I think that pretty much covers it there's not really much else to it than that um, it's, this is on you gotta remember this is like one this is the basic basic inspection for this there's a uh, all different kinds of thicknesses and bearing sizes you can go with and you know different bearing size tightnesses for specific applications I, I don't do that I don't do those kind of things I just stick with uh, your basic stuff and the basic stuff is always certain you know done me well even for a high horsepower application so until I start having back-to-back -back failures you know I'm not going to reevaluate what I've been doing successfully now for a couple of years all right guys um I uh, hope this fucking video helped you out a little bit. If it did, you know, please hit the thumbs up button. Every thumbs up helps. Also, you can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Facebook and Twitter will be for your weekly news and for a way to DM. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.